Among gamers, the story of Far Cry 5 is by far one of the most controversial stories ever put into a video game. Some players believe it was a good story with a lot of details. Other players, not so much. But whatever you think about Far Cry 5, this still has to be one of the most in-depth stories ever put into a video game. So far so, that all the evidence you need to connect all the dots is not actually in the game itself. You have to go to common readings outside of the game to fully understand the game. That's what I'm going to explain here in this video, and understanding these things can go a long way into your enjoyment of the story. If you were a person who maybe didn't enjoy Far Cry 5 that much, or at least the main storyline of it, because of the ending, understanding the details that I'm going to explain to you in this video can maybe switch your thought on it a little. Now, you still played the game, you still didn't enjoy it, I can't change that, but I can maybe make you understand why the game was written the way it was. And just to say it, I'm not going to fix the ending of the game in this video. It's kind of a bummer of an ending, and in all honesty, that's how it was meant to be. Now just as a quick disclaimer here, I'm not going to be covering in depth of any characters or any side quests that don't directly pertain to the main storyline and its underlying story. Also. In this video, I want to make it clear that this is not another theory video. There have been hundreds of those, if not thousands, across YouTube ever since the game's release. I am making a video here with evidence from in-game and outside sources of the story of the game. Now, because all the details of what I have to say aren't actually all in-game, you do have to take this with a little bit of grain of salt, and you have to read into the story a little bit to actually understand what I'm saying. But I think with the evidence I have, I have a pl pretty clear understanding of the story enough to explain it to you here in a video. With that said, let's get right into it and let me explain to you the true story of Joseph Seed's Cult. As anyone who's played more than five minutes of Far Cry 5's story knows, Far Cry 5 is heavily based in religion, as are most cult stories. And while Joseph Seed does quote many religions and their books, he always seems to have a slightly misconstrued iteration of those teachings. He doesn't directly always say what the book says, nor does he always use the meaning that was put in whatever text he's quoting indirect to his situation. Of course, a lot of the Project at Eden's Gate's teachings are closely tied to the Bible. And the story in this, this game is closely related to the Book of Revelations and its description of the end of the world. In Revelations, for those who have read it, you know there are seven seals that must be opened for the world to end. And the underlying story of Far Cry 5 is the seven seals that are mentioned in the Book of Revelations. This is the format that Far Cry 5 follows. Now I have one more quick disclaimer before we get into this heavily. Far Cry 5, as you know, is a fictional story and because of that it takes liberties with the books of different religions that it quotes. And now everything that I say from now on is based on the Bible only, not taken word for word from it. Because there are a lot of things in the game that are different than the Bible actually describes them but close enough that we can call them the same. And also, as I've already said, Joseph C. does misconstrue a lot of the words in different books of religion to fit the situation he's in and convince his followers that he is the true hand of God. But, back to the story. In Revelations, seven seals must be opened in order for the world to truly end. It's said that one chosen angel or lamb of God will open them. This is you, the deputy. You will find that every choice you make in the game pushes the world closer to its end. Through either your blind rage or your pride, you will end the world, depending on the choices you make in the game. Now, right now this may seem a bit confusing to you, that you, the deputy, the protagonist, could actually be the one causing the end of the world. But as I explain some of this, hopefully it'll come together for you and you'll understand why the deputy is actually the antagonist of the story in a small way 
if you'd make certain choices. And honestly, the choices are the choices that 90% of all players probably made on their first playthrough. So we'll revisit this at the end so that you can have a better understanding of it. But to get started off here, we need to start off with the seven seals. More importantly, the first seal. Now, as a lot of people know, the first four seals are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. When they are seen, it is said that that seal has been opened. The first is the arrival of a horseman on a white horse. This is the opening scene of the game when you land in Joseph's compound to arrest him. And Sheriff White Horse is the white horse. And you, the deputy, are in fact the horseman. In fact, in that opening scene, Joseph quotes the particular piece of scripture when you arrive. I saw when the Lamb opened the first seal and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts say, Come and see. Step forward. And I saw. And behold, it was a white horse. Now this is what I was saying, this is slightly not correct on how the book of Revelations is actually written, but it makes our first tie-in to the book of Revelations. Very quickly in the storyline do we have our first tie-in to the book of Revelations. Joseph does seem though to have a twisted view on who the deputy is. He sees the deputy as both hell on earth and the Lamb of God, the one who will open the seven seals. That's a small point, but other things I noticed about White Horse is the fact that the White Horse in the book of Revelations is seen to be carrying or wearing a crown and carrying a bow. And the Horseman is the Horseman of Conquering. I believe the in-game parallelist would be Sheriff White Horse's badge and gun. They parallel the crown and the bow. Kind of holds similar place just in a more modern society. It's again, it's a twisted view of it, but so is the whole game. It's not Sheriff Whitehorse who's hellbent on conquering, but in fact you the deputy. You are the one who takes Hope County back from the cult, not the sheriff. A major part of the game is in fact conquering the three regions and then Joseph's region. Conquering Hope County back from the cult, retaking the county from the cult. And as we move on, the last three horsemen of the apocalypse, or the second, third, and fourth seals, are actually Joseph's heralds, John, Jacob, and Faith. First of them is Jacob, the second seal, the red horse, also known as the horseman of war. This is a very quickly seen parallel if you know the fact that Jacob Seed himself is a war veteran and a leader of the Peggy army. Another thing, if you notice the loading screen in the Whitetail Mountains is the second horseman is known for the sword he carries and how he takes all peace from earth and this is exactly what Jacob does in the White Tail Mountains. It's kind of interesting how in other regions we seem to get safe spaces such as um, Falls End or the Hope County Jail that serve as safe locations once conquered where we can go back and do business, um, rest, things like that where we aren't bothered by the Peggies. But the only place in the Whitetail Mountains where that seems to be a thing is the bunker, is the Whitetail Militia's bunker. But in the end though, even that bunker is taken over by Jacob Seed once he gets you to kill Eli. He takes all the peace from the Whitetail Mountains. There is no place in the Whitetail Mountains unless it is some old man hiding in a cave or high up in the mountains where there is no peace, where someone can be quiet and on their own without threat. And as for his sword, as I pointed out before, if you ever noticed how there are a few knives in the game, um, again, this is something I actually wanted put into the game and I've talked about in previous videos that there should be knives. But after seeing this parallel, I understand why there weren't as many knives even with the large amount of melee weapons that we have at our disposal, there's no machetes or knives that we can use in combat except for throwing knives. And the reason for that is, is that they wanted Jacob's knife to stand out. Again, as I was saying earlier, in the loading screen, 
he's seen holding a large red-handled knife. And I believe that to be the sword that the Horseman of War is holding. By not putting a lot of knives in the game, the developers have made Jacob's knife stand out. It's a, lot, it's a knife that a lot of players have said, well, why can't we get something like that? It's in the game already, and it was on purpose. If you also notice how all his weapons are red, his handgun, his rifle, and his knife are all red. They have red handles or are painted red. Also, his hair is red. That is the connection back to the fact that he is the red horse. Moving on to the third seal and horseman, John C. The third horseman can be identified by his black horse, or in John's case, his black hair and plane. This horseman can also be identified by the scales in his hand and the famine that follows him. Now John's duty to the cult is to collect resources and members. In doing so, he creates a famine for all of those who are not members of the Project of Eden's Gate. Even before the reaping began, John was buying farms and large amounts of food, causing the price of food to skyrocket before he was even directly just taking it from people. He even takes the people of Hope County as resources. Every person he recruits becomes a Peggy and can no longer fight against the Peggies unless they, of course, try to get out, which is usually disastrous for the person trying to get out. He takes literally every resource in the valley. The food, the people, even the water to an extent. Now, as for the scales that the third horseman is said to carry, John doesn't actually carry any scales with him, not physical scales. But the scales are what represents the horseman's ability to judge souls. And that is what John does. John's whole yes campaign is him wanting the people to say, yes, judge my soul, tell me what my sins are, and tell me how I can pay for my sins. John's big thing when he converts people to the cult is he wants them to be judged so that they can atone for their sins and he can decide their true punishment. And last, but definitely not least, the fourth seal and the final horseman, who of course is Faith. Faith is the horseman of death, and the traits about the fourth horseman are the fact that the fourth horseman rides a pale horse. Again, we look at Faith, we see that she has pale skin, pale hair, pale clothes. Al almost everything about Faith is pale, even the bliss is kind of a pale color. That's the pale horse. Hell is said to follow after the fourth horseman, and also the fourth horseman has the power to kill a quarter of the Earth's populations. Now, with Faith, they took a little bit more liberty than they did some of the other horsemen. Because about the hell following after, I couldn't find any direct relation in game to any great evil or evil army that directly follows Faith. Unless you count the angels, but I didn't consider them on a great enough scale to be hell following after Faith. The only other connection I could make would maybe be the small parallel of Joseph seeing the deputy as hell on earth and the deputy following faith, but the deputy never really truly follows faith except for in a few scenes such as jumping off the mountain after you destroy um, Joseph's shrine. I don't really consider that enough solid evidence to find the connection to hell following after faith. If you have any ideas or thoughts on that, I'd really like to hear them. Just go ahead, leave a comment on the video. I'll probably reply back to it because I, I really want to hear them. This is just something I've been thinking about, haven't been able to put all the pieces together. But moving into the next point of Faith having the power to kill a quarter of the Earth's population. In her case, it's not the Earth's population, but in fact, Hope County's population. And if you really give it some thought, Faith kills more people than does any other Herald, or Joseph himself even. The other three, Joseph, Jacob, and John, want to convert people or make them stronger to aid the cult and their attempts to take over Hope County and survive what they believe is the upcoming apocalypse. 
So they don't actually want to kill these people, they want to convert them, but faith has been known to just wipe out entire groups of people just to take a land or something she wants. She will even at points get so angry that she will just kill somebody, such as with the angels. She can't convince people directly to join the cult, so she surrounds them with so much bliss that they either die or turn into a mindless angel. And either of those is kind of like killing them. She's taken the soul. A lot of people talk about how the angels are just husks. They're not souls anymore. They're not people. So she's killing these people, taking their souls. And uh, the last little bonus piece of evidence here is the fact that the fourth horseman, one of the noted weapons of the fourth horseman, is plague. And of course, that would be the bliss that Faith uses to convert her followers. You'll also notice that a lot of the people that are fighting for Faith that are not angels or heavily bliss-infected people were sent to her by either Jacob or John. A lot of them, there's comments about where they came from. Faith does not actually convert a lot of people without the use of bliss. So now we have the four horsemen, but yet there are still three more seals that must be broken for the world to end. The fifth seal of the apocalypse is the souls of the martyrs, those who were killed in these battles, screaming out to God for him to stop their suffering. And they are told to wait a little longer. In the Bible, they're given white robes, but that's not something that we really see paralleled in Far Cry 5. At least I didn't find it. And the martyrs we're talking about here are two different groups. These are the martyrs as the people that the cult itself have killed, which are kind of minuscule compared to the people that the deputy has killed. I don't know about you guys, but in my first playthrough of the game, I went back and I looked, and I had killed about 1,500 cultists. You know, the game takes period over a short period of time of sorts, depending on how fast you play the game. You know, let's say a week to a month, depending on how fast you play the game. Even in a month, it's kind of a stretch for one person to go to battle with 1,500 people and kill them all and survive. Now, of course, it's a video game, and that's sort of the liberties we take with video games. But still, 1,500 people killed by one person in such a short period of time, or even the cult, they killed a lot of people in a short period of time. These are the martyrs, and these are the souls, these are the fifth seal that gets broken when these people are screaming out to God to bring justice. Even though you don't agree with what the Project at Eden's Gate is doing, you have to realize that the people you are killing you are still killing they believe in God and they would be screaming out to God if killed for you for God to bring justice against you same as the other version of that where the cultists are killing the citizens and they would be screaming out to God for justice against the cult so we have large numbers of people dying in Hope County causing the fifth seal to be broken the souls of these people crying out to God for justice and of course, this sort of happens over the entire game period and comes to a head when we finally kill all three heralds and we go to face Joseph Seed at his compound. We have an extensive fight scene with him that ends with us having to make a choice to either walk away or to either try to continue to defeat him. Now, of course, if we choose the option to resist Joseph and fight him, we know that a nuclear war breaks out on Earth. This is the sixth seal. The sixth seal is the apocalypse, or creation being uncreated. And the signs of this are great earthquakes, the sun turning black, the moon turning red, stars falling to Earth, the heavens disappear, mountains and islands are removed for land from the land. And this is the day the wrath of the Lamb has come. These are the things that are in the book of Revelations that we can pull out that make sense in the game. Look what a nuclear bomb explosion can do. It'll shake the ground like a great earthquake. The sky will turn red and black because of the explosion. 
the nuclear bombs themselves sort of look like a star falling to earth. Of course, through the mushroom clouds and the smoke, the heavens, the skies would disappear. And, of course, a nuclear bomb has the power to destroy whole islands and whole mountains. The wrath of the Lamb is the wrath of the deputy, the anger of the deputy. Now, Joseph also says that he believes John was wrong. John decided our sin was our wrath, our unwillingness and anger at him to stop fighting. But Joseph actually tells us that he believes our sin was our pride, our unwillingness to let the land that we knew and loved and lived in be taken over by him. And that's what's causing us to go after him. Now, there's one more piece of the seven seals that's not actually a seal, but is an integral part of them, and that is the redeemed being sealed. Those who were the ones given the white robes being sealed against the damage of the end of the world, the apocalypse itself. Now, in the game, that's not actually this. Those martyrs from the fifth seal are not the ones that are sealed against the end. But in fact, it is Joseph and the deputy. They are physically sealed in an underground bunker that will protect them from the nuclear bombs and the radiation that they will lay waste to the earth. And then finally, the seventh seal is the silence in heaven. In the book of Revelations, of course, that silence would be truly in heaven and not on earth. But I believe that Joseph sees earth as heaven because after the seven seals are broken, in the Bible at least, Jesus is supposed to come back and claim the earth again as heaven. I think Joseph believes he is the one, he even says it, he will leave the bunker with you and make earth a better place. He believes he is the hand of God who will create earth again. And of course the silence is the fact that very few people remain on earth and once the bombs fall, earth would go pretty quiet, you know, there's not going to be a lot of movement with a large portion of the earth's population being killed in a single movement. Now, that's the parallels to the story. That is the seven seals of the apocalypse that the story follows. I'm not saying Joseph's right, I'm not saying he's wrong, because that is in fact for you, the person who played this, to decide. There's evidence to sort of support both theories. For one, we hear radio broadcasts before we actually defeat Joseph about world troubles and the world possibly getting ready to go into a great war, even talk of nuclear war. But on the other hand of that, we know that Faith Seed is not the first Faith Seed. She's been replaced before. That's our evidence to the other side, that Joseph maybe read the book of Revelations wanted to be something and was just crazy enough to surround himself in these things that would create the book of revelations starting his holy war in a county that had a sheriff named white horse he who he knew if he behaved badly enough or did enough things against the law would come after him at some point and be the first seal or he was right all these things are put there by fate and he really is the hand of God who was supposed to protect the world from the nuclear bombs. Now, of course, he sort of failed in that as only two people survived that we know of. Personally, I kind of go with the option that he was just a crazy guy who surrounded himself by the right people to kind of make his story come true. I sort of believe that the nuclear bombs didn't really happen because we kind of have an out on that because we're so high on bliss at the time of the battle with Joseph that we could imagine anything on Bliss. You know, we've seen Faith do odd things on Bliss, we've seen interesting things happen. So it's not too far of a reach that if we're on a hallucinogenic drug, we could see a nuclear war happening at the stress point of a battle. I kind of think that it didn't happen too because once the game ends, you can go back into the game, complete other quests, and Hope County is not truly destroyed. But that's my theory. That's what I believe. You have to kind of pick your own choice on that. Do you believe Joseph was truly the hand of God, or is he just crazy enough to pull off a big stunt like this that matches the book of Revelations? That's all I really have. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you learned anything, found it interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like. It would mean a lot to me. The next video out is going to be a continuation of 
of the fastest cars in Far Cry 5 series going to the trucks and vans class with some even more upsets from last time which I find really interesting. So, hope you guys will stick around for that. If you don't want to miss it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As always, I appreciate everything you guys do, and have a wonderful day.